Hey kids, welcome to a unit one, lesson five, methods, exercise number five. We have a choose your own adventure. Honestly, almost all of these have the identical solution. The higher up the letter, the more steps you have to add. I'm gonna do B. Let's go ahead and jump into code and see what we have to do. Looking at our code, we don't have much here. We have our import statement. Remember, this is the same thing as lesson three when we had the painter class. You can do it one of two ways. You can have a class open or you can import it. Important thing is oh, we have access to those pre-written methods. We have our class header, public class neighborhood runner. Remember, it has to be the exact same as your file name. We have public static avoid main string Argus. This is just saying this is where the program's gonna start. We have a to-do, we have to instantiate a painter object and use the methods in the painter class to navigate through the neighborhood to reach the traffic cone. We have to instantiate our object and then move the object all the way down here. That means we really have two things to do. We have to instantiate an object and write some methods. Let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to instantiate our object. How do we do that? Well, we have to call the class. What class are we working through? We're working through the painter class. We need a reference variable name. I'm just gonna use roads because a lot of my name. We need an equal sign, the new keyword, the constructor we wanna call. It's a no argument right now. So we're gonna put some parentheses and a semicolon. Well, that creates our object. So if I hit run, our default is zero, zero facing the east with no paint. If I hit run, I should get my painter to pop up. And I do. Now we're going to write our methods. Give ourselves a little room here. What is a method? A method is simply a block of code we can call to reuse. We've looked at two methods so far in this class, move and turn left. Those are just pre-written blocks of code we can use. In a couple of lessons, we're gonna write our own method and it usually makes a lot more sense after we do that. But just remember a method is just a block of code we can call. And I'm just gonna take this step by step. The first thing I wanna do is move my painter up one dot. How do I do that? Well, I need my reference variable name, the dot modifier, and then what we want it to do, move, parentheses, and a semicolon. When I hit run, my painter should move one step. There we go. After this, it's just rinse and repeat, my friends. We got to turn left, so we're going to do our roads, turn left. Let's hit run and just make sure I get that right. Sometimes I get it backwards and I was. We don't have to do it once. We have to do it three times. So let's put roads, turn left like that. I hit run, now I should be facing south. I am, now we have to move twice. Roads, move. And another roads, move. Give ourselves a little room here. Let's hit run. There you go. Next, what do we have to do? Well, we have to turn left. So we're going to go roads dot turn left. We hit run. We should turn left now. We are now we just have to move some more. So roads dot move roads dot move we have one two three another one roads dot move give ourselves a little more room go ahead and hit run almost there now we're going to do another roads dot turn left and then we're going to move a couple of spots. So we're going to do a move give ourselves a little more room here. Another roads dot move and another roads dot move. That should put us right around there. Let's go ahead and hit run. Uh oh, 
I think I moved a couple too many times. Oh, no, I didn't move too many times. I didn't put enough turn lefts in there. I'm facing this direction. I have to go one, two more. I'm just going to copy two from here. Come down and uh, paste it. I always mess that up, kids. Let's hit run. So close to that cone. We're going to do another roads. Turn left. And then another roads. Dot move. Well, this should get me to the cone. Let's speed it up a little. Hit run. And our painter reached the cone. You might notice that the finish button is still grayed out. Remember to read the instructions, kids. We have to test it in order to finish. So we have to hit test. We succeeded. We can now finish. Good job. There is a couple key takeaways from this lesson. First is reinforcing how we instantiate our object. Remember, we are calling from the class we want to create it from, our reference variable name, the equal, the new keyword. We call the constructor, parentheses, and a semicolon. It's important to remember this anatomy because Java is object-oriented programming, and this is the foundation of that object-oriented part. Next, we're just reinforcing how we write methods. Remember, we need the reference variable name, the dot modifier, which is telling Java, hey, we want to do something. That something is a method. Our method is move. That moved us up one dot. As you saw, I just wrote a little code, hit run, ran a little code, and hit run. For me, that's easier. I know I'm going to make an issue. I just want to catch it quick. I highly encourage you to adopt the same philosophy. There's just one more thing I want to talk about real quick. You can see I put spaces in between each of the different blocks of code that I was calling. And this is just a format that I like. Honestly, you don't even need spaces. In Java programming, indentions, returns don't mean anything. It's that semicolon that's important. So you can see I can put it all in one line. If I hit run, my program's going to run just the way it would have if they were all on separate lines. I would find a way that is easier to read. The reason we don't put it all in one line is this is very hard to read and understand. Whatever way you choose to do it, just be consistent. And remember, the point of this is so other people can read your code. Hopefully oh, this video helped you understand methods a little better. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson.